Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to continue creating our SpongeBob in Fusion 360. I hope it's working better than it, well, it started working here at Rogers Middle School. Anyway, <clears throat> here we go. So what we're doing today is we're actually going to, well, extrude our eyeballs. And then we're also going to add onto those surfaces the pupils. Hopefully we can do that in a matter of a short time here. <clears throat> and then the one thing we want to do is grab a screenshot. Uh, to turn this well, assignment in and then move on to the next assignment, which is going to be more videos that's finishing SpongeBob. <clears throat> anyway, here we go. So what we want to do here is we want to know that we are going to be going, well, 25 millimeters. That's the extrude for the eyeball and then five millimeters for the pupil. Those are the two important pieces of information. Now, going back to my fusion, <clears throat> remember, if you're not finding it, it's probably over here in the left hand edge of our uh, data panel. I'm going to hide that now that we've been through there. With that being said, <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do is realizing that we have done some drawings. Um, you can see that uh, we have made this 3D if you click on the corner. Um, you can also notice that if you look in your sketches, uh, the sketch that we had turned on in the beginning here is also turned off. <clears throat> After you extrude, it automatically makes that invisible, just to let you know if you ever need to find it again. Now, with that being said, today what we're doing is we're going to be extruding these two at 25 millimeters. So we're going to start by going up to the left-hand corner. Once again, if we haven't flipped to the ISO view in the top corner, then we want to do that. And we want to select extrude. When we select extrude, we want to come over to the surface we want to touch. We want to click on it. And then after that, we want to make it go the direction it's supposed to go. And we're going to be going out this direction, which is giving us a positive 20. And we actually want to go 25. So I'm just going to type in 25. And then I'm going to hit enter. It changes that shape. If you notice, it also got rid of our sketch. Now, the reason why that is, is I must have done both sketches on the same uh, on the same eye, I guess, or the same piece over here before I checkmarked it. At the same time, to get that back on again, we got to expand our sketches. We got to select the eyeball, and then we can see our other one again. Now, we come over here and do the same thing with our extrude on the opposite side. Select. You can click and drag it out if you want to. <clears throat> with the hand. Oh, wrong surface. Edit, undo. I'm starting that over. Extruding this surface. If I click and drag it, I should be pulling that piece out. I misclicked last time. Edit, undo is control Z or the arrow up in the left hand corner here. Now, once again, typing in 25. Enter. <clears throat> Important things about that are now we should see that we have those things changes. We can turn those sketches off to see just the, what it would look that, that way. If you go to the front, it kind of looks like our drawing originally because you can't see that depth. But there has been, well, some other pieces that are made 3D, the eyeballs. Now, <clears throat> the next part of this, we're going to add some more circles in the middle for our pupils. So we're going to go to the front view again, whatever we're drawing, we're going to do create a sketch. <clears throat> we're going to come to that eyeball surface and we're going to select it. And it kind of kicks me over to the corner. I can then pan back or I can zoom in, zoom out to get back to where I want to be. And I want to go to the circle, which is the letter C, I believe, on our keyboard. <clears throat> and then I want to go to the middle of that circle. And sometimes you can find the center because it, it says place in the center point. It kind of snaps to it, right? If you kind of move around, you should be able to find that in the dead center of your last circle. If we select there, and then slide out, this dimension is going to be 50 millimeters, or half of our other circle. After we do that, <clears throat> we can check mark it, so we don't have to turn our sketch back on like we did last time. And then we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. <clears throat> Create sketch. Select our surface. Remember, we can pan by select or pushing down the scroll wheel and just kind of pan that back up. Sometimes it's a little bit easier depending on what you like to do for navigation. We want to use the circle tool, which is the letter C on the keyboard. And once again, find that center point. Select it. Slide straight up or straight out. That's where I might have may have failed my last thing. Uh, straight up and straight out is really important, if you're, especially if you're trying to connect spots to tangent points or uh, points that should be in that spot. I think a lot of times in these programs, circles are actually 24-sided shapes. <clears throat> so just to let you know that, um, going straight out or straight up puts them usually on the, well, the 90-degree corners, the 0, the 90, the uh, 180, 270. Anyway, with that being said, this is once again 50. Enter. And now that we're going after our drawing, uh, we want to finish that sketch. Now we have the two pieces that we're going to extrude. 
the next thing, remember whenever we're extruding, we are going to the upper right-hand corner, <clears throat> selecting it, and we want to then come in and use our extrude to grab that surface. If you want to, you can click and drag it in the right direction just to see what the number's saying. And this one's just gonna be five. Enter. We're gonna do another extrude in the side. Basically the same thing, mimicking the other one. Select it, <clears throat> typing in five, and hitting enter. Now we have our SpongeBob, well, with two eyes and pupils. <clears throat> with that being said, it's always good to save. So make sure we're saving our work. I just usually click OK here, which gives me a new version. All right. Now, with that being said, what I want to do here next is I want to grab a screenshot. All right. So I want to get this kind of in the middle of my screen. And for me, the way the screenshot works is if I press my print screen, it goes gray. And then I can click and drag my surface to screenshot that, all right? That screenshot is in the snipping tool. I can open this up here and save it anywhere else I need to do that. At the same time, I think this may be different for a few spots, so that's where I'm gonna end the video. If we need help with the uh, screenshot, don't be afraid to ask. Hopefully everything went well. Have a good day. Thanks for trying.